So now that you understand the fundamentals of header files, I need to explain header guards. Um, I've changed up my project a little bit. I have my normal CVP scratch pad with main, but I added a hero class and a monster class and a vector class. Now let's just pretend that vector is a rather complicated class. Yes, it stores um, three coordinates and then there could be more stuff, but for now this will suffice. Uh, monster and hero, these two classes are actually identical, um, but notice both include, they found include vector here at the top. And uh, a hero has a position, a monster has a position. Later on in game design, I'll show you how to do these designs better with the component system, but for now, bear with me. Um, <clears throat> so in CPP Scratchpad, if I wanted to have a little game that had a monster and a hero, I would pound include hero, pound include monster. And let's do hero, hero, monster, monster. Now let's build this and see what happens. You see we have a error vector type redefinition. The compiler is complaining because vector is defined more than once. Well, looking at the code, I see one vector class. I don't see a vector class here. I don't see a vector class here. And I don't see a vector class here. So you may be scratching your head, and hopefully so, and trying to understand why uh, we're getting such an error saying there's more than one vector class. Well, the problem is because of the preprocessor and what the preprocessor does with the instructions we issued to it. So let's go back here. Notice vector dot h has nothing in it. In fact, actually, let's start from the bottom. Instead of starting from the top, let's start from the bottom. So the only translation unit in this um, uh, project is cpp scratchpad.cpp. Notice for my solution, I deleted all the other cpp files. So this is the only translation unit. Well, the preprocessor sees it needs to include all IO stream stuff, so it gets the IO stream stuff and pastes it in there. And that, well, this actually starts from the top down. So let's start from the top down. Hero.h. The preprocessor says, oh, I need to include hero.h. So it goes to hero.h and says, okay, copy paste. So over that pound include hero.h instruction, we have um, we have pasted over the contents of hero. The hero.h's contents. Well, look at this. Look at this. I notice a little a, a recursive instruction here. We have another pound include. And the preprocessor says, oh, we need vector.h. So the preprocessor goes over to vector.h, copies everything in vector.h and pastes it over that pound include instruction. Pop. And then moving on, it says, okay, well, I see pound include monster.h. So let's go grab monster.h's contents and paste it over that pound include instruction. But then look at this, we have a recursive pound include instruction. It says, oh, I need vector. I need vector. So the preprocessor goes over to the vector.h file and back in our original translation unit, uh, over the pound include vector.h, it pastes the contents of vector.h. And then it does the same for iostream, and iostream is big and hairy and deep. Let's not go into that. But but th that's the basic idea. All the pound includes turn into copy and paste recursively. Well, now that we've seen what the preprocessor does with those instructions, look at our, our, our translation unit now. I see a a vector class, I see a hero class, but then we have another vector class. We have a monster class, so we only have one monster and one hero, which is fine, but because we included hero and monster, um, both of them included vector, so we have two copies, which makes two definitions of the vector class. So when we build this, the compiler says, hey, um, you're, you redefine the vector class. Well, hopefully you can imagine with several classes and several header files and a large scope project that this could be a problem very quickly and very pain, it could become a problem very quickly and it would be very painful. So instead, um, what C++, the preprocessor provides is yet another instruction to guard us from this situation. And, and basically that is, we say, remember all preprocessor instructions start with a pound, so we say pound, if not defined, if, oh sorry, I need an if. 
if in def, if, mm, if in def, whew, there we go, if not defined, and you can put anything you want here. I mean, convention is, is well, there's sort, all sorts of conventions, but my convention is generally follow the h file. So vector h, you know, if I haven't defined vector h, then um, let's, let's, in here, let's pound define vector h. And when I say pound define, before in, in the video I showed you before, I pound defined this, uh, this name to be a number or it could be anything but we could, can also say hey just pound define it meaning it's defined from now on it is defined it wasn't defined anymore but it wasn't defined before but now I am defining it and then as with all ifs we have to end them so pound and if is kind of like a closing uh, curly brace if you wish so look at this the the pound if and def is a separate instruction from the pound define, but basically I'm saying if that's not defined, do everything in here or paste everything in here. Okay, um, so let me let me roll roll, and all I'm going to do is change vector to h. Uh, you need to put vector header guards is what these called guarding us from that painful experience. You need to put those in all your header files just to avoid a lot of pain. Um, but let me let me uh, let me rewind this CPP scratch pad back to what it was, and we can redo the pound includes now. This is this is going to be great. So um, uh, let's see. Okay, so we pound include hero. So let's go to hero, copy hero's contents, paste it in place of the pound include instruction. So paste. But we need to recurse into this pound include. We see oh we need to grab vector. So we go to vector. And now, remember, we're the preprocessor. We're not the compiler right now. We're the preprocessor. And the first instruction we see is, if not defined, vector h. Well, we have never seen vector h before. So let's just, let's let's paste all this stuff in there. So copy, let's, let's, uh, well, actually, actually, let's just, let's just copy all this. You know what? We, we're, we need to copy. Sorry, forgive me. We need to copy and paste no matter what. So go over here. And in pound include vector, we're going to copy and paste that. Okay, um, <clears throat> and then continuing on, we see pound include monster. So I don't. So let's go over to monster and copy all of its contents and paste it there. But then again, oh, we have that pound include vector h. So we better go grab vector and copy all of it and paste it over the vector h. So the 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 final translation unit contents are roughly the same. But the end result will be different. So now the preprocessor says, oh, I can go through these instructions. So pound if not defined. If vector h is not defined, and it isn't, we have not seen vector h before this. In this, we're going to look at this translation unit as a whole. So we haven't seen pound, we haven't seen vector h. So, oh, well, let's define it. So now it's defined. Vector h is now defined. It's true, if you wish. It's a, it's a Boolean. Uh, and then we'll just roll with this in class vector. And, and we go on and da 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 But now we say, if not defined, well, vector h, we've defined it. We saw earlier that the instruction, the preprocessor instructions told us, the preprocessor, to define it. So it is actually defined, meaning we're going to skip the entire body of this if, this preprocessor if, or if and def uh, instruction. So basically, this is dead to us. This highlighted portion I've highlighted here, it's dead. Let's delete it. And then we continue on. Well, notice that I just deleted that second vector class definition. So now we only have one vector class. Whereas before we had two, we guarded ourselves against that using pre -pro the preprocessor instructions, if not define, pound define. So we get one instance. That's great. But we won't get the second instance because we check if this is defined and we define it if it's not. So this is much like any kind of programming. If you if you need to set a flag that something's gone in there and just execute it once, you can use some cheap booleans to do it. It's kind of hackish, but it works. But and, and, and the end result is this this builds just fine. If, well, if, I don't know if you missed it, but it said build succeeded. Build succeeded. Let me just unwind all this. Uh, doing this by hand is great for video and for teaching you and showing you, but but let me just prove to you that the preprocessor 
does it all for us. Build succeeded. So anyway, those those are header guards in a nutshell. Very important. Every header file should have them.